Welcome to Family Basics 101. I'm Dr. Bruce McClure, and as we continue our five-part series on family, today we will talk about family communications and the transactions within those communication realms within a family. Within a family system, the communication that takes place at some level reaches the lives of everyone in the system, in the family system, for better or for worse. When individuals interact within the family system, they are doing so within the context of each other's what is known as transgenerational receiving and response system. And the responses are done so in such a way within parameters of the context, not always based on what is said, how it is said, why it is said, but rather simply because something was said. So within the transgenerational receiving and response system, it is not always predicated upon, well, in this day and age, people talk about, well, it's the tone. In, 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 in terms of family communication transactions, sometimes tone has nothing to do with how a person responds to what is said or what is not said. Sometimes people say, well, it's the way you did this. It's the, when we deal with transgenerational receiving and response systems, oftentimes there isn't a right tone. Oftentimes there's not a right time. It's based on not always how something is said, not always why something is said, not based on who said it, but it's based on this is how my family has taught me to respond to people, and that's going to happen regardless of who the person is. This is more commonly known as the multi-generational transmission or communication patterns. And when you look back through the annals of a family, you'll see a repetitiveness of how the individuals within a family responds to whoever, whatever, whenever, however, something is communicated. Proper communication transactions must be accessed over time, and they must be observed over time, with attention being given to how two or more individuals interact, rather than within one transaction. So to understand properly communication transactions, it must be accessed over time. And then the people who are assessing the communication transaction within the family system must observe over time how do these individuals interact. Individuals communicate interpersonally. So what you're looking for in communication transactions, is there a relationship? And if there is a relationship, then the next thing that must be observed and assessed is, is this a healthy or is it an unhealthy communication relationship? What is the strength? What is the weakness of the relationship? And typically that's going to present itself in how there's the reception and how there's the transmission of the communications within that interpersonal relationship. Oftentimes, people wonder why there are blockages in terms of communication. Most of the time, you can trace it back 
to the transgenerational learned pattern of communication of the individuals who are attempting in the present to have an interpersonal communication transaction. Now, according to findings from researchers at three different universities, the University of Louisville in Kentucky, the University of Illinois at Champaign, and the University of Nai Chai in China. All sites the same from three different areas of the country. All three studies combined makes a similar observation. All are going to cite what has become known as the Thomas Theorem, which suggests that two people will define the same situation quite differently because they have defined the contents and the context, not just of one event that's unfolding in front of them, but rather they are going to or define the present situation before them, the events of life, from two different vantage points that has already been learned. So you look at the present transaction of communication, and what Thomas will say is you cannot just look at the present transaction. You must know something about the two individuals who are engaged in the transaction, and then you will see a pattern that presents itself in the present. But unless there is an interpersonal knowledge of the individual or individuals who are trying to have a communication transaction in the present, you may be taken for a ride because it appears as if this one transaction went well. And the reality is, as stated earlier, it's only over time that you can really determine what is the real transaction communication pattern of an individual. So the Thomas theorem is more commonly known as social constructing of reality or what is called scripting. As it sounds, scripting means a pre-planned thought a pre-planned process, a pre-planned response, and a pre-planned conclusion to anything that is said, anything that is done, anything that is intended by self. And then it's carried into how others will be handled in the communication process. So scripting, on one hand, means an individual has already been programmed through that multi-generation and through that transgenerational socialization in terms of how something is supposed to look, how someone is supposed to respond, and therefore, in the social scripting, especially if it is an unhealthy social scripting, is going to miss the reality of the day. Social scripting, for the most part, does not take in to consideration what's before them in the present. They've all, it's almost like the old adage, don't confuse me with the facts. My mind is already made up. Social scripting does not lend itself to variables when it is developed into socially, psychologically, or even into spiritually unstable, unhealthy environments. Scripting, communications, the art of communication, communicating within healthy relationships are sometimes set to the sideline and individuals try to stick to the script that has been pre-programmed and most of the time pre-programmed into them by the time they're five years old. And that will impede healthy adult communications 
in the here and now. I'll see you back in class again next time. Don't be late and don't skip class.